And good afternoon, I'm Tim Callahan in the 23 ABC studios. We're coming online on our digital platforms, Facebook, as well as our website, turn to 23.com to bring you a developing story that came into our newsroom just about an hour ago. This is about the Francisco Cerna death investigation. If you remember, that was the police involved shooting involving Bakersfield police and a 73 year old man uh, who was holding a crucifix at the time. This uh, story, of course, garnering a lot of national uh, outcry and national news as this 73 year old man who found Family members believed to have dementia. You see the picture on your screen here was shot and killed by Bakersfield police in December of last year in the early morning hours of that night back in December. As you remember, Bakersfield police initially investigating this, they launched a critical incident review investigation in February, a few months after that initial shooting. And we are just now learning that the officer who fired the fatal shots has been cleared of any wrongdoing, according to that incident review board, the critical incident review board put on by Bakersfield police. Again, that now five month long investigation after that review board was formed coming to an end today. And we were expecting a word from Bakersfield Police Chief Lyle Martin in uh, just a few moments to deliver a press conference about his findings and answer questions to the media about why they came to this conclusion and cleared that officer of wrongdoing. The night of that shooting back in December 23 ABC speaking to the son of that victim, Francisco Cerna, and here is what he had to say to us that night about the uh, father who he remembered never owned a gun. If you remember about this story, there was some speculation initially whether Francisco Cerna had a weapon that was later found. He was holding a crucifix in his hand. Here's what his son told us the night of that shooting. As far as gun, he's against it. He voted against it. He wants to get him off the streets. So I heard uh, earlier somebody saying that he was waving a gun or something. He walks around with a cross. You know, and that was that initial soundbite from the son at that scene, the shooting investigation scene that really drew a lot of that uh, criticism and a lot of that outcry from police uh, from uh, people in the community about Bakersfield police in this investigation. Of course, days after that shooting, just four days, uh, newly uh, placed police chief Lyle Martin addressed the media uh, for the first time. He hadn't really officially taken that position, and he said in hindsight he wanted to do that because he wanted to show leadership on this, show that he was on top of this investigation, and we're going to play a soundbite from that uh, in just a moment, but 23 ABC did get the 911 calls that night uh, from that person who called in, and this is what started that investigation, some of the speculation about what officers who were responding to that scene may have seen as they approached uh, Francisco Cerna. Let's play uh, that audio for you. 911. There's a man outside my house with a gun. That was that one soundbite there that really kicked off this uh, investigation, the 911 call uh, that came into dispatchers that really the officers on scene and we'll hear from uh, Police Chief Law Martin from the initial press conference about the confusion and about the, uh, the the moments that officers got to the scene. Again, responding with the thoughts that the, the man seen on your left there, 73 year old Francisco Cerna was armed with a weapon. Uh, here's what Police Chief Lyle Martin said uh, just days after that shooting investigation. Excuse me, we're actually going to play. Uh, let's play that now. The fact that we thought we were dealing with an armed subject. Um, it's approximately 20 to 30 seconds past from the RP saying that's him to the first shot fired. So officers are taking cover, giving commands, trying to put together a plan. And as Officer Cerna advanced on Officer Selman, he made that decision. And again, that officer, Reagan Selman, is the officer who was at the center of this officer involved shooting. Again, we're coming on uh, over the uh, digital platforms here to tell you about the latest development. That officer, Officer Selman, has been cleared of any wrongdoing in the shooting death of 73 year old Francisco Cerna. We're expecting a press conference in just about 10 minutes. Uh, similar, we can expect a scene similar to this one from Police Chief uh, Lyle Martin at Bakersfield Police Headquarters. Of course, after this story, uh, advocates and folks in the community came out in strong opposition of this shooting, uh, criticizing the officers' uh, tactics and as well as what happened. Dolores Huerta, a community activist, was uh, very vocal about this story. Let's hear what she had to say in the early stages after this shooting happened. This family is a, a very typical family here in the Central Valley. Uh, the family, they've been farm workers, they've worked uh, all of their lives pretty much to be able to, you know, support their children, send their children. And here you have this, um, that, this violent death of their father, Francisco Serna. 
And again, that was the moments after that. There was a candlelight vigil held uh, to remember him outside of his home where that shooting took place. I want to take you into the 23 ABC Live Center, taking on that tone that Dolores Huerta was talking about. Initially after the scene, it uh, garnered a lot of national uh, news. We can see the LA Times picking up this uh, story as we see this article that they ran uh, just days, a day after the shooting. Uh, and they were talking about that 911 call that we played for you just a moment ago. ABC News as well, uh, making the trek down to Bakersfield here after they they uh, covered this story, addressing police, asking whether uh, they thought this was justified. I mean, this was a 73-year-old man. The family said he may have suffered from dementia. And the obvious questions after the shooting was he armed, and we learned uh, shortly after that he was not. And that's uh, certainly what garnered a lot of that outcry and a lot of that uh, different uh, criticism of Bakersfield Police. And, of course, this all came just about a year after this article you see here, The Guardian, uh, similar, this is the article about the uh, Cerna shooting, but before that, The Guardian had published this article here talking about Bakersfield and Kern County as the deadliest police in the country per capita and the number of shootings that had happened. So certainly it was a rough time for Bakersfield Police as we scroll through some of those, uh, that article and those old uh, officer-involved shootings in the past. It was a difficult time for Bakersfield Police and, of course, Lyle Martin, who was just taking that role in as the uh, new police chief. That's why just four days after this and after the community, there was some uh, outcry and, and different groups like Dolores Huerta and others criticizing Bakersfield Police uh, for this actions. That's why he came out uh, and held that press conference uh, in his words to uh, paraphrasing here, but to get ahead of it and to show uh, that he is very much uh, in charge of that department and leading the way in this investigation. He promised a transparent investigation. He promised an open investigation that again, critical review board opening that investigation in February, just about uh, two months after that initial shooting. And again, the news today that critical incident review board has concluded their findings and the officer involved in that shooting of Francisco Cerna Reagan Selman has been cleared of any wrongdoing and uh, we're not uh, we expect this press conference here in just about uh, eight minutes from Bakersfield Police Headquarters will get some context as to why that decision was made the status of the officer whether he's back on the force and of course uh, what we'll be doing in our reporting in the next uh, few hours and several days following this news of course figuring out the status of the family. We uh, have a reporter out there to uh, get their reaction to this uh, as this news broke just about an hour ago. I uh, get their reaction to the findings of that critical incident review board. There was talks after that about a lawsuit from the Cerna family uh, to Bakersfield Police. We hope to get an update uh, on that as well. Again, just uh, moments ago, 23ABC learning that the officer in the Francisco Cerna officer-involved shooting case has been cleared of any wrongdoing. Again, this case stemming back from December 2016. It's one that drew a lot of outcry from the community folks out there uh, wondering why officers decided to fire upon a man who later on in the investigation we learned wasn't holding a gun as we heard from that caller in the 911 call that initially drew officers to that scene with hurry uh, and the suspicion of that, suspicion of that gun. Uh, we later learned from officers that he in fact was not holding a gun, instead holding a crucifix in his hand. And, and we heard from his son the night of that shooting who said he he didn't believe in guns and he walked around with that crucifix. Still, the circumstances as to why his father was walking in that neighborhood uh, late at night, uh, we still don't know that. I think the family at the time uh, was still uh, uh, speculating on those details as to why uh, their father would have been out. Let's put the video back on your screen there. Again, uh, this all stemming from that shooting that happened in December 2016, Bakersfield Police uh, one officer, but several responding to the scene, opening fire on 73-year-old Francisco Cerna. He was pronounced dead uh, a short time later, and that began a months-long investigation, one that was heavily scrutinized uh, by community members. We saw that uh, candlelight vigil where Dolores Huerta was talking, as, as well as other folks, the family members, shocked about how this could have happened, the circumstances that led to his death. And again, we are uh, awaiting a press conference from Police Chief Lyle Martin, uh, just about a year on the job, and is already facing several hurdles in his uh, tenure as police chief. This being one of the biggest investigations, and as well, uh, there have been uh, several other officer-involved shootings in his time in office. Uh, I had a conversation with him shortly after he uh, assumed his position as chief, and uh, he talked about just the challenges about the community policing, and certainly uh, these cases don't help 
in building uh, that trust between police and the community they serve. We talk a lot about that. And uh, Police Chief Lyle Martin uh, said in paraphrasing again here, but it is his mission uh, to bridge that gap between the uh, Bakersfield police community and the officers that patrol the streets. Uh, again, we are coming over the uh, Facebook page here, live streaming with you, and as well as our 23ABC uh, live stream online. Turn to 23.com to bring you that news that the Critical Incident Review Board connected to, and this is the uh, investigative body that investigates all officer-involved shootings, along with the DA's office. We should note that uh, we hope to expect some sort of reaction from them. If you remember, a few years ago, the uh, DA's office announced that they will be also overseeing every officer involved shooting that happens in the county between sheriffs and or police. So uh, we, we won't assume, but we will uh, hope to talk and get comment from them whether uh, what form of investigation they role they had in this investigation to see uh, the details from their perspective. Uh, this is a case that uh, lots of people talked about online just a moment ago. I was in the Live Center uh, looking at uh, social media. Some folks responding negatively to this news um, that uh, the officer involved in the shooting was cleared of any wrongdoing. Um, without uh, editorializing here, this was, of course, a case that a lot of people uh, asked how this could happen. And a man 73 years old, uh, his family saying he, they believed he had dementia, how an officer could uh, fire on that man and later learn that he didn't have a weapon. I want to play that soundbite again from the sun. Again, this was taken the night of that investigation, right? You can see the police tape uh, behind as details were coming in. The sun talking to us about the uh, speculation just in the moments after that shooting about whether his father had a gun or not. As far as gun, he's against it. He voted against it. He wants to get him off the streets. So I heard uh, earlier somebody saying that he was waving a gun or something. He walks around with a cross, you know. Again, that soundbite there, that's uh, one that really became the trigger point for so many people in this community, especially after it was learned there was no gun. He only carried around a cross. Uh, that the defining soundbite really in the moments and, and days after that shooting that caused so much outcry. We want to take you now to live pictures. This is at Bakersfield Police Headquarters, where Bakersfield Police Chief Lyle Martin expected to address the media in just about three minutes. I was told just a moment ago this press conference is on time as scheduled 3.30 this afternoon. Hearing from Bakersfield Police Chief Lyle Martin for the first time uh, since that initial press conference uh, back in December. There hasn't been any uh, talk about this really in the media since then. The Critical Incident Review Board forming their investigation in February. As we see there, that uh, press conference getting ready to start in just a, uh, a few moments there. We should also note as well that uh, this all came also, the timing of this investigation, as the Department of Justice in the state of California announced it is looking into uh, the Bakersfield Police Department and the Sheriff's Department for uh, different civil right violations, uh, allegations of excessive force. Uh, so the timing of all this, again, in our conversation with Chief uh, Martin after this, uh, in fact, the day we interviewed Chief Martin at BPD headquarters after he assumed his role as chief, that news broke that day that the Department of Justice was looking into his department as well as the Sheriff's Department. So no doubt a trying time for Bakersfield Police as they try to uh, clean up their image, so to speak, with the uh, community members, especially a family like the Cerna family. Uh, so it will be uh, certainly interesting to hear what Chief Martin has to say about uh, this investigation and how uh, that critical incident review board came uh, to finding that officer, Officer Reagan Selman, uh, clearing him of any wrongdoing uh, in that uh, shooting investigation to 73-year-old Francisco Cerno. I'm being told we're just about a minute away from that press conference happening at Bakersfield Police Headquarters. Uh, two things we'll be watching for here. Obviously, Chief Martin will address uh, his findings and um, how they came to that conclusion. The second, uh, District Attorney Lisa Green and her investigators, uh, as you remember, a few years ago, they announced they'll be looking into every officer-involved shooting. Uh, so we will also be looking to see if they plan to make any comments uh, in their involvement in that uh, investigation and if they have any sort of conclusion they can draw. Let's put those live pictures up again as we get ready to take this press conference down at Bakersfield headquarters. Uh, in just uh, about a minute, we're going to be uh, watching this podium for Chief Lyle Martin. 
Uh, we assume some of his uh, counterparts will be joining him as well uh, to address any questions from the media. Again, as this all happened a year ago, a little um, about, uh, excuse me, about seven months ago, after he took uh, his first role as chief, Chief Martin got ahead of this in his words and wanted to address um, the media, you remember uh, Chief Williamson was actually still on as Bakersfield Police Chief, but he decided uh, before his official swearing in ceremony that he wanted to take the lead on this investigation, assuming knowing it would be carrying on into the first uh, few months as his position as chief. So uh, we will hear once again from Bakersfield Police Chief Lyle Martin as an officer connected to that officer involved shooting has been cleared of any wrongdoing in the death of 73-year-old Francisco Cerna, who was killed by Bakersfield Police in December 2016 after initial reports he had a weapon later found to be a crucifix. Again, this press conference just about to start any moment. Uh, we're going to leave you with this live picture. Our uh, team of reporters are going to be there covering this story as well, getting reaction uh, from the Cerna family on this news today. You can look for updates on turn to 23.com as well as our Facebook page as we see there uh, an officer in uniform coming up uh, to address. That looks like uh, Ryan Croker, the Bakersfield Police um, public information officer is uh, either getting set, uh, getting answering any final questions the, the reporters may have on this. Uh, we'll listen in here and uh, and see if perhaps he addresses the media first. Uh, we do expect, though, as we mentioned, to see Bakersfield Police Chief Lyle Martin, as uh, former the members there of the media put up their their uh, mic microphones on the podium. Again, that is uh, Bakersfield Police Chief uh, Bakersfield Police PIO Ryan Croker. Let's listen in. Short. Uh, Chief Martin is going to come up momentarily and talk about some of the facts and circumstances uh, involved in this officer-involved shooting, and he'll answer a few questions at the conclusion of his statement. Chief. Good afternoon. I'm here today to speak to our community. This was an unfortunate and tragic incident, and my deepest thoughts and prayers go out to the Cerna family, as well as members of the Bakersfield Police Department and the entire Bakersfield community. As I indicated to you on December 13, 2016, this organization is committed to the safety of the entire community. I believe my duty is to give you the facts in regards to this incident as I understand them today, and to put some things in context. I appreciate you all coming. As the press release indicated, the Critical Incident Review Board, which consisted of Captains Joe Bianco, Joe Mullins, Renee Chow, and retired Captain Brian Clayton, determined that the shots fired by Officer Reagan Selman on December 12, 2016, resulting in Francisco Cerna's death, were within department policy and within state and federal guidelines. As reported on December 12, 2016 at 12:37 a.m. officers responded to the 7900 block of Silver Birch Avenue in regards to a call of an older Hispanic male in his late 60s later determined to be Mr. Cerna wearing a brown jacket brandishing a gun specifically a revolver the caller indicated that he did not confront Mr. Cerna as he believed he had a gun based on the female reporting party statements and Mr. Cerna's hand position. At 12.41 hours, Officer Selman and Johns arrived, and while speaking with the reporting parties, they are again informed in person by the female that the subject has a revolver. Mr. Cerna exited his home and began walking towards them. The female party pointed towards Mr. Cerna and said, that's him. Mr. Cerna starts walking towards the officers with his hand positioned inside his jacket the way that the male reporting party had described in the original call. Officer Selman took a position of cover behind a vehicle in the driveway of 7912 Silver Birch Avenue and told Mr. Cerna to stop and remove his hands from his jacket. Mr. Cerna did not stop and continued walking directly towards Officer Selman. As Mr. Cerna got closer, in an effort to create time and distance, Officer Selman moved from his original position of cover and retreated towards the east side of the residence while continuing to give commands to Mr. Cerna to stop and remove his hands from his jacket. 
Mr. Cerna did not comply with the commands and continued walking towards Officer Selman. Officer Selman then took a kneeling position behind a sofa near the east side of the residence in an effort to get cover and to get Mr. Cerna to comply. Mr. Cerna continued towards Officer Selman, ignoring commands to stop walking and remove his hands from his jacket. Officer Selman considered retreating again, however realized that he was literally cornered between two residences. He would then have to turn his back to Mr. Cerna to climb a fence. Officer Selman again commanded Mr. Cerna to stop and remove his hands from his jacket or he would shoot him. Mr. Cerna continued to advance to Officer Selman and was now 15 to 20 feet from Officer Selman with his hands still in his jacket. Officer Selman fired his weapon, striking Mr. Cerna. After reviewing the witness statements, officer statements, the physical evidence collected, and the recommendation of the Critical Incident Review Board, my decision on the incident is that Officer Selman's actions were objectively reasonable under the totality of the circumstances. This incident is under review by the Kern County District Attorney's Office and they will make a legal finding. We have already forwarded this investigation to the California Department of Justice as part of their ongoing pattern and practice investigation of the department. And I would like to remind the public that the day following this incident, I invited the Federal Bureau of Investigation to review the facts and circumstances of this shooting and they accept it. With that being said, this officer involved shooting is being reviewed at the local, county, state, and federal levels. With that, I'll take a few questions. Um, uh, just go over the, the amount of incidents that uh, BPD uh, uh, arrives on where they were able to de escalate the situation, um, and then a, a, a firearm usually uh, is, is encountered in that respect. Go over the amount. Really, the ratio of how many you guys are able to uh, able to disarm and, and uh, defuse without an incident like this happening. I don't have specific numbers for you, but what I can tell you is, responding to over 300,000 calls for service a year, over a million contacts, our uh, special enforcement unit has seized over 150 firearms already this year alone, where we're chasing people. We're encountering violent and armed people, and we have very few, 2016, for example, four officer-involved shootings. So as you can see with our press releases, almost daily, we're encountering people with firearms, and it is rare that an officer-involved shooting occurs. Is there any update on the uh, Justice Department investigation? No. Um, when the Justice Department was here on December 28th, they asked that all media inquiries be handled through them. Um, we have been in constant contact with them. We have exchanged volumes of information. However, they've asked that all media inquiries be directed to them. Yes. Is there any uh, video that's going to be released in the dashboard camera or fine? We do not have body-worn cameras or dashboard cameras in our vehicles, so we don't have any video. Yes? Given the media's coverage of this, it has come out several times that the police department was aware that Mr. Cerna may have had dementia um, early stages of Alzheimer's. Was this something that was factored into concluding your response to this? Officer Selman had responded to the Cerna residence in November of 2016. That information was given to the officers at the scene. However, when you're looking at something developing in less than one minute, yes, you know, we take into account somebody's mental state, but the reality is a person with dementia with a gun can kill you just like a person without dementia with a gun could kill you. So it's the totality of the circumstances. I can't take just one single fact and pull that out and say that's the decision that you have to make. Yes. And I was able to talk to the woman who had told her boyfriend at the time to call 911, and 
they had said when officers arrived at their house, they had told them that he might not have been brandishing a firearm. They're kind of stepping back on their word, but you're saying that's not what you got from officers in talking with them? That is correct. They were told specifically a revolver. So the officer, did the officer ever see a gun or just the positioning in the jacket of what could have been a gun? Correct. The officer never saw a firearm. He saw the positioning of the hand position in the jacket and, again, retreated once to a place where he had nowhere to go and made that ultimate decision. Obviously, this decision comes with controversy with the public. They were really invested in this case. You have, since the beginning, put out that you want to get in front of things like this and be transparent. In having this press conference today, what message are you trying to send to the community? The message to the community is the men and women of the Bakersfield Police Department go out day in and day out to keep this community safe. And I have been entrusted as your chief to give you the facts as I know them, when I can share them, and to be as transparent as legally possible. And this is just another step in that direction. That step started December 13th. I was not even the chief yet. This is what the public can expect from me and your police department. As a police department, have you been in contact with the Sarin family? I know that they now have legal representation. That's correct. I have not been in contact with the Sarin family. And now that the legal processes have started, it's probably going to preclude me from being able to speak with them. And since before you took the oath to be chief, this has been on the table and now making the decision you did. If the DA were to file charges or find something else, does that hinder something? Does that damper your look, I guess? Or what are your thoughts if they do file any charge? The district attorney's office makes the legal, they are the legal expert, if you will. My role is to look at policy, procedure, and state and federal guidelines. So when they make their determination, the district attorney's office will come out and lay out the facts as they see them and determine if there's any charges or not. And as far as Officer Somerville, is there a time frame as far as him returning to service to get into duty? Or what's the process like now moving forward? We do have a process. There's things that we have to put in place to make sure that Officer Selman has a safe return to duty, as well as make sure he's prepared to deal with some of these issues. Today, in fact, prior to this press conference was the first time I spoke with him. I called him on the telephone to inform him of my decision and the process going forward, which will be handled through his operations commander. So he is still on administrative leave? He is on modified duty. He's been in the building. Are you willing to share anything about that conversation with the officer? You have to realize that a line officer with two years on doesn't have a whole lot to say to the police chief. Yes, sir. No, sir. So I just told him that this was my decision, the press conference, and to contact his operations captain. What has the police department learned from this? There's lots of things that we can learn from this. One is things happen rapidly, and the police department has gone above and beyond to try to address issues regarding mental illness, critical incident management, defusion, de-escalation, all those types of things. We've done hours and hours of training that our staff goes through. But I will tell you, those that call for de-escalation and defusing need to understand that that is a two-person process. Officers can attempt to de-escalate and defuse, which in these facts I've laid out to you, when Officer Selman retreated. But if the second person does not de-escalate or defuse, at some point we have to take some action. We'll do one more question. Anyone else? And going off of that, because when I talked to you back, this happened 
you didn't stand by what you're saying. You're saying it's hard to predict um, when or where something would happen, and it's hard for officers to react to behavior. And you're saying in OIS situations, complying complaints. But given the officer knew the state of Serena, and I know it happened in an instant, but was there another way to be able to handle the situation besides shooting and taking his life? First of all, you make the determination that the officer knew that Mr. Serna had to, I don't know that he had dementia now. That's what someone's saying. But he has responded to his house. He'd never made contact with Mr. Serna. He was there for an act, actually the time he was there was for an alarm call. Okay. So he didn't even recognize Mr. Serna. However, going to your question, as I said earlier, that is just but one factor in making a decision whether to use force, not just deadly force, but any force whatsoever. So is it reasonably objective based on the totality of circumstances for Mr. Selman or uh, Officer Selman to make that decision? And in my opinion, the answer is yes. Thank you, Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. And you have been listening live to Bakersfield Police Chief Lyle Martin addressing the media uh, for the first time since that decision was made. In his words, his decision, my decision, after uh, Chief Martin reviewed the uh, Critical Incident Review Board findings, he made the determination that uh, Officer Selman was acting within state and local guidelines when he decided to fire those fatal shots at 73-year-old Francisco Cerna. We did get some, some uh, more context to what happened that night. He described the moments Officer Selman first First, uh, as you heard there, was, was getting on scene, talked to the people who called 911, retreating behind his car and then approaching Cerna as he was walking away. He talked about the moment that Cerna went towards him. He made repeated attempts for uh, Mr. Cerna to get his hands out of his pocket. Again, the officer, as Martin said, assuming he was armed with a handgun, a revolver, as he said, uh, decided uh, moments later to shoot uh, Cerna after he said he had uh, no place to go. He was pinned between two homes and he would have had to turn his back on Cerna uh, in order to get away. That's when uh, Officer Selman, according to Martin, made the decision to fire shots at Mr. Cerna, killing him at that scene. Again, some other information that we got uh, about this investigation was um, that Chief Martin had not spoken to Officer Selman until the day uh, that he called him recently and told him about his findings, that he was cleared of any wrongdoing uh, in this case and uh, according to Bakersfield Police, and that he would return to uh, what uh, Officer Martin described as uh, intermediate duty, uh, active duty around uh, the Bakersfield Police headquarters. What can't be understated and what should be underscored about this right now is that the district attorney's office is still continuing its investigation into this shooting, and that still could result in uh, criminal liability of Officer Selman. We have reached out uh, to the DA's office to get their uh, findings and whether um, their investigation investigation is nearing completing. We should also note that the FBI, according to Martin, was called upon and they are still reviewing the facts of this case. So Officer Selman has been cleared in terms of his uh, liability to the police guidelines of Bakersfield Police and any wrongdoing there. But this case, according to Martin, seems to still be in the hands of district attorneys as well as the FBI as to the final findings of Officer Selman's actions uh, to shoot and kill um, the 73-year-old uh, Cerna. Again, the DOJ also involved in looking at this case uh, as well. So it will be interesting to see what happens in the coming days and weeks. Again, our team coverage will begin tonight on 23 ABC News at 5 and continue right now on turn to 23.com all throughout the evening and afternoon. For everyone at 23 ABC News, I'm Tim Callahan. Thanks for joining us for this breaking news. We'll have more coming up in just a few moments.